In this video, I will explain how the elliptic curve is used to generate a public and private key pair. Blockchain implementations such as Bitcoin or Ethereum uses elliptic curves to generate private and public key pairs. Elliptic curve cryptography was invented by Neil Koblitz and Victor Miller in 1985. A 256 ECC public key provides a comparable security to a 3072 RSA public key. The primary advantage of using elliptic curve-based cryptography is reduced key size and hence speed. Elliptic curves have nothing to do with ellipses. Ellipses are formed by quadratic curves. Elliptic curves are always cubic. The Standards for Efficient Cryptography Group is an international consortium to develop commercial standards for efficient and interoperable cryptography based on elliptic curve cryptography. The SECG website is www.secg.org. This is their website. The two documents we are interested in is this one, Standards for Efficiency Cryptography Part 1, Standards for Efficient Cryptography Part 2. Part 1 describes how the elliptic curve cryptography works. Part 2 describes the recommended elliptic curve domain parameters. The SECG has published a document with a recommended set of elliptic curve domain parameters referred by the letters P, A, B, G, N, and H. This data set is collectively referred to as the elliptic curve domain parameters. That is this document, part 2. Here are the recommended elliptic curve domain parameters. These parameters have been given nicknames to enable them to be easily identified, for example, SECP 256K1. In this table, you will find a set of elliptic curve domain parameters. The elliptic curves use smaller key sizes with respect to RSA, providing comparable security. If you look at SECP 256K1, the elliptic curve uses 256-bit key length. Its counterpart, RSA, uses 3072-bit key length. Bitcoin and Ethereum both use the same SECP 256 K1 elliptic curve domain parameters. If you look at part 2 of the recommended elliptic curve domain parameters document, this section, recommended elliptic curve domain parameters, SECP 256K1, page 9. Here are the recommended parameters SECP 256K1, which is used by Bitcoin and Ethereum. Here are the parameters P, A, B, G, N, and H. SECP 256K1 uses the following elliptic curve equation. I squared is x cubed plus ax plus b. In the following slides, we will go through each parameter P, A, B, G, N, and H. Parameter A has the value 0 and parameter B has the value 7. Thus, the equation will be y squared is x cubed plus 7. This is how the elliptic curve looks like. Please ignore this line. And I've zoomed out. It goes to infinity. A finite field is a field with a finite number of elements defined by parameter p which is a prime number. Thus, the finite field range lies between 0 and p minus 1. This means that modulo p should be used in the equation. The elliptic curve equation is y squared is x cubed plus ax plus b. Elliptic curve equation with the modulo operation will be y squared is x cubed plus ax plus b modulus p. SECP 256K1 defines parameter p having this value. This is in hexadecimal form. The base point G, also known as generator or primitive element, is a predetermined point on the elliptic curve that everyone uses to compute other points on the curve. Often the base point G is displayed in two ways. In the compressed form with the prefix 02, so this is the base point G with the prefix 02 over here. If you remove the prefix 02, this value is the x coordinate. To get the y coordinate, you use this equation. The parameter g has also an uncompressed form with the prefix 04. 
this is the uncompressed fold with the prefix 04. If the prefix is removed, the first half from here to here, the value is the x coordinate. This value from here to here is the x value. The last part from here to here is the y coordinate. In my discrete logarithm video, part 9, I have explained what a cyclic group is. When you apply a certain number of operations to base point G, the cycle starts all over again in the same order. When the next cycle starts the first time, it is indicated by parameter n, which is called the order of base point G. n has this hexadecimal value. The parameter n determines what the maximum value is that can be turned into a private key. Any 256-bit number in the range 1 and n minus 1 is a valid private key. The parameter h is called the cofactor and has the constant value 1. Because it has value 1, it does not play a role in the key generation, and I therefore will not elaborate on the purpose of this parameter. So to recap, I have gone through all the SECP 256K1 domain parameters, P, A, B, G, N, and H. Here is P in hexadecimal form, and this is in decimal form if you want to calculate it. A has this hexadecimal value, which is 0. B has this hexadecimal value, which is 7 decimal. The base point G in compressed form with 0, 2, which means that this is the x value. To calculate the y value, you have to use the equation which I've mentioned in the slides earlier. And this is G in uncompressed form. The first part is the x value, and the second part is y value. And this is the order n value, and this is the h value. There are two operations, often called dot operations, which can be applied to a base point on the elliptic curve. Point addition and point doubling. Before I explain what point addition and point doubling is, I first have to explain that the elliptic curve with this equation has the following properties. If a line intersects two points P and Q, it intersects a third point on the curve, indicated by the label minus R. If a line is tangent to the curve, it intersects another point on the curve. All vertical lines intersect the curve at infinity. I will now demonstrate what I just told you. If a line intersects two points P and Q, it intersects a third point on the curve labeled minus R. A line goes through P and Q and intersects the curve on this point. Look at minus R. Here's minus R. If I move point P over here, look at minus R, it, it always intersects the curve. The second point was, if a line is tangent to the curve, it intersects another point on the curve. If P and Q are on top of each other, it is tangent. The line intersects the curve. If I move P over here and Q over here, the tangent line intersects the curve. Here's minus R again. The last point, all vertical lines intersect the curve at infinity. Let's say P is over here and Q is over here, then you have a vertical line. But if you look at the curve, if I go to infinity, it is almost a straight line. Point addition is adding two points P and Q on an elliptic curve, whereby P and Q are not the same points. First, I demonstrate the geometry approach. Draw a straight line between P and Q. The line will intersect the elliptic curve at exactly one more point labeled minus r. The reflection of the point minus r with respect to the x-axis gives the point r, which is the result of addition of points P and Q. We draw a straight line between P and Q. It will intersect the curve at minus r. And when you mirror this point on the x-axis, you will get the point r. Please note that the elliptic curve is symmetric around the x-axis. When you add 
P and Q, you get the final point R. And this point, its coordinate, is what we want to know. Point addition does not mean addition of the X or I coordinates of P and Q. It is just a name given for this approach. Point addition has nothing to do with adding the coordinate of point P and Q together. Point addition is just a name. It just means draw a straight line between P and Q. When it intersects the curve at this point, minus R, then we mirror this point on the x-axis to get this point. And this point, R, is the coordinate we want to know. Here is the mathematical approach to calculate this coordinate with these three equations. Lambda is the slope of this line. X and Y are the coordinates of point P and point Q is the base point G. And when you use these three equations, you calculate the X and Y coordinate of point R. Point doubling of point P on the elliptic curve. It is the same as moving point Q to the same location as point P, which means P has the same coordinate as point Q. Let's demonstrate the geometry approach. Draw a tangent line to the elliptic curve at point P. The line intersects the elliptic curve at the point labeled minus r. The reflection of point minus r with respect to x-axis gives the point r, which is the result of doubling of point p. We have points p and point q. If we move point p to the same location as point q, what we now have is a tangent line at point p, which intersects the curve at this point labeled minus r. The reflection of point r with respect to the x-axis gives point r. Point r is the result of point doubling. We want to know this coordinate. Point doubling does not mean multiplying the x or y coordinate of point p. It's just a name given for this approach. There's also a mathematical approach to calculate this coordinate, r. You need these three equations. Lambda is the slope of this line. X and Y are the coordinates of point P, this point. Now you have enough information to calculate the X and Y coordinate of point R. Let's create two functions called easy add and easy double. This is point addition and this is point doubling. The easy add function contains these equations and the easy double function contains these equations to calculate the X and Y coordinate of point R. More information about these mathematical equations can be found at this web address. In the description below, you can find this web address. Before I start explaining how the public key is generated, you need some additional information. The following procedure describes how to generate a Bitcoin public key. For other blockchain implementation, it may differ. When the raw Bitcoin public key is generated using the easy add and easy double functions, it looks like this, a large hexadecimal number. The actual Bitcoin address looks like this. Additional conversion steps need to be applied on the raw Bitcoin public key to get the actual Bitcoin address, which will be explained in another video. In the following slides, I will only be focusing on how to generate a raw Bitcoin public key using the easy add and easy double functions. I will be using this Python script to demonstrate how to generate the public key. The original Python script is created by James D'Angelo, who also created an excellent YouTube movie called Bitcoin 101 Elliptic Curve Cryptography. The link for both Python script and YouTube movie can be found in the description below. I have slightly modified the original Python script. In the Python script, the SECP 256K1 domain parameters are defined, the P, A, B, G and N parameters. These domain parameters are the same as defined in the SECG domain parameters document. Here are the SECP 256K1 domain parameters, P, A, B, G, and N. As you can see, these domain parameters are the same. The P is the same as this one. The A and B, the 0 and the 7. In a Python script, the uncompressed form is being used. This is the X value. And here is the y value, which is the same as over here. And the parameter n, which you can see over here, it's the same as this one. Here's the g parameter, also called the generator point. Here's the x coordinate and the y coordinate in hexadecimal form. 
I've converted the hexadecimal values into decimal values, which you can see over here. To give you an idea how large this number is, the x coordinate is approximately the same as 5.5 times 10 to the power of 76, and the y coordinate is approximately the same as 3.2 times 10 to the power of 76. So where is this point located in the elliptic curve? So here's the elliptic curve. And if you can see, this is 10 to the power 8, 11, you get the idea. So I'm now 10 to the power of 28, but now you have an idea where this generator point may be located on the elliptic curve. In the Python script, easy add and the easy double functions are defined. These functions are the same as the functions we have been talked about earlier in the slides. Let's see how the public key is generated. First, you need to generate a private key. This is my generated private key over here. So these are all definitions. Here is where it starts. ECC multiply uses the generator point and the private key. Here's the method ECC multiply. This is generator point and this is the private key. The first step is to check if the private key is valid. As you can see, this is my private key, and this is the end parameter. And you can see the private key is much smaller than the end parameter, so that's the private key is valid, and my private key is not the same as zero. Next, it converts my private key into a binary value. This is my private key, and this is my private key converted into a binary value. The generator point is assigned to variable q. This for loop goes through each bit of my private key. The first step is to use the generator point as input for the easy double function, which generates a new coordinate, which is the r point. Next is check if my binary value is 1, which is not because it's now 0. Then it reads the next bit value, that is 1. It applies the easy double function again. Then it checks if the bit value is 1, which it is. It applies the easy add function with the previous calculated point and the generator point. And the next bit value of my private key is being read. That is this one. And it continues the loop. When it reaches the end of my private key, it has final coordinate. And this final coordinate is assigned to this variable public key. This script first prints out the private key. Then it prints out the x value of my public key, the y value of my public key. And here it prints out the x and y value of the public key concatenated. So what it does is it prints out this value, the x value, the y value, and the x and y value concatenated. Let's test this. Here's my private key. Here's the x value of my public key, the y value of my public key, and the public key where the x and y value are concatenated. 2a is here, 2a, and 033 is over here. The x and y coordinate are concatenated. I've now demonstrated how you generate a public and private key pair using elliptic curve.